event to be at today. Today, not just in our city, not just in our communities, but in our country. What an amazing event to be at today. Can we just give a round of applause for being here, right? I'll go ahead and take that. I'll take that right here. Um, it's a good thing that I've coined a word. I'm an activist. I'm a professional actress. I love that. And I'm an activist. I chose to do theater because it was a place where I could ungun, if you will, get rid of, do away with, let go of anything that does not serve me and my trauma. So instead of continuing living through trauma, I decided to do professional drama, if you will, and get paid for it. And that has helped me mentally to just release. And I want to just say to you, I wouldn't be me if I didn't tell you that it's important for you to have a way to release where we're not hurting other people. Because hurt people do hurt people and healed people heal people. So I want you to decide today to be a healer. And I want you to decide today to help others to heal. It's so easy to fight. Oh, I knew how to fight that other way too. But when I met Congressman John Lewis, he taught me how to get into good trouble. And I'm so glad about it. Because when Ferguson took place in our city almost 10 years ago, almost to date, if you will, I was working on a movie called Four Way Stop right here in the city of St. Louis, this time 10 years ago. And just a few weeks after that, we know what happened in our city, in our community. I wanna fast forward to November of 2015. Congressman John Lewis came to St. Louis to show his movie at Washington University, Good Trouble. Raise your hand or clap if anybody was there or remember that. Well, guess who picked him up from the airport? Oh, it was me. I had an opportunity to pick him up along with his handler, if you will. And when I picked him up, I was told to take him to his hotel and then I would come back and I would have dinner with him and some special friends. The next day, I would get an opportunity to escort him to Washington University for his movie. And so I was excited. Just, just the idea of that. Who knew that I would be a part of history in that moment? But what I knew, the biggest thing that it was important for me to do to ask him, did he want to see the grounds where everything happened in Ferguson before I took him to his hotel? And he said, I would be delighted. Please take me there. So we got off course a little bit and I took him to the very spot where Michael Brown Jr. was killed. Congressman John Lewis got out of my car and he went and he stood in the exact part of the pavement where Michael Brown Jr. body lied for hours. He stood there and he wept. He cried and he cried. And I said to his handler, I'm a little concerned with him standing there with his eyes closed because they come around that corner really fast and so I, I definitely wanted to make sure we could get him out of the streets. So his handler went in and urged him to come on and get back in the car. When he got in the car and I put my hand on the uh, shift so that I can get into reverse, he put his hand on my hand and he says, I'm sorry. And I said, oh no, it's nothing to apologize for. I just didn't want you to get hit by a car. He cut me off. No, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. He says, I'm sorry because I thought when we marched across the bridge on Selma, I thought we fixed this. He says, and I see that we didn't. He says, so I'm gonna ask you young lady to take this baton as if he was handing me an invisible baton. He says, I want you to take this baton and I want you to run across the finish line and don't stop running until we fix this. Well, I want you to know right now, you can look at me and tell I don't run very fast. <laughs> so I'm gonna need you all to run with me. I believe that God set it up, that he chose me 
to be the one that Congressman John Lewis would say that to because he know I'm not afraid to take a mic in a stage and tell you what he said so we can get the job done. This is not just on Dr. King and everyone who stood with Dr. King when they crossed the bridge of Selma. This is all of us. We can't keep pointing fingers and saying this person's not doing anything. They're not doing anything. I'm gonna tell you this, the moment you say somebody's not doing something, your mind is off of what you should be doing. I need you to stay focused because we got a job to do. We got a race to, want to run and we're going to win that race. I want to share one more piece that when he say, seen his his movie, his documentary for the first time, he had not seen it until he came to St. Louis. That's history. He had not seen his full documentary until he came to St. Louis. He chose to watch it here with us. And when it got to the part where they hit him in the head and he bled on that bridge. He laid his head on my shoulder and he began to cry. I want you to know he was triggered by what he had seen, even though he had experienced it. But when he saw it again in real time, if you will, on that screen, he was triggered by it. That's trauma. That's what we must heal from. We have experienced too much community trauma and we're not healing. And so I'm saying to you, it's important for you to get the help that you need if you feel in a certain way and you're going through a certain thing. When we go to those voting polls in, in November, it's not gonna get any better. When we come across January 6th again, it won't get any better. We will be triggered by the things we keep experiencing. So right now, connect to everybody you can so we can help each other heal, so we can do the work that's necessary to do. Voting is necessary. It's probably the only thing we have in this moment to bring us together and keep us alive and keep us safe. Make sure that your neighbors are registered. When you see a child that looks like they're 18 years old or older, ask them. How you doing? Are you registered to vote? <laughs> I need that to be a part of the conversation. How you doing, baby? Are you registered to vote? Quit worrying about how they wearing their pants. Quit worrying about how who they hanging out with. Quit worrying about those things. What we need right now, we need everybody on our side to go into those voting polls and like they said, vote for the right one. I'm Dr. Marty Casey with Ungun Institute. It's been an honor and a pleasure to be here. Thank you.